In the first two parts of this series of videos, we examined NIST's story about the collapse of World Trade Center 7. One of the things that NIST say is that For World Trade Center 7, thermal expansion was a critical factor. What NIST actually blamed for the collapse is was thermal expansion of long span floor systems located on the east side of the building. Shown in green here is the girder that failed connecting column 79 to column 44. One of the things that NIST claim may have happened is that as this girder is pushed by the beams it can break the connections with the column. So let's examine just how valid that claim is. We wanted to find out just how far these beams would expand and how far they would have to expand to cause the girder to fail. And having put the figures that NIST used into a spreadsheet we found that the maximum expansion that could be experienced by any of these beams at 600 degrees Celsius would be 5.77 inches beyond its 5.5 inch midpoint on an 11 inch seat. But there are a few problems with the way that this calculation was done. This equation gives the expansion for unrestrained steel and seeing as these beams were firmly attached at each end and had shear studs across their span they were hardly unrestrained. Also, delta T should be the change in temperature experienced by the steel and not the final temperature reached. And thirdly, the figure used to calculate the coefficient should be an average temperature. Once these factors are considered, a more modest figure of around 4.6 inches is attained for the maximum expansion in these beams. This alone would prevent the girder failing due to expansion but there are some even more serious errors in this story. This is drawing Frankel 1091. It references what NIST say is an 11 inch seat plate as PF. But when you look at the bill of materials, plate PF is in fact 1 foot long, 12 inches, and not 11. So already we have went from this to this. Below PF on the drawing is another plate called PG. And you can see from the bill of materials that PG is 14 inches by 2 inches by 1 foot 6 and 14 16 inches. This extends out beyond the edges of plate PF and increases the walk off distance required to fail to somewhere in excess of 9.4 inches. That means we've went from this to this and now to this. So things don't look good for this story, but just take a look at drawing 9114. It details a plate to be added on both sides of the girder and calls it PL. As you can see in the drawing, PL measures 5.5 by 3 quarters by 1 foot and 6 inches. And it's welded at the bottom on the side. So now we have went from this to this to this and then this. Clearly, NIST didn't take into account all the elements that made up this connection between the column and the girder. So if NIST made mistakes about the elements that made up the connection at column 79, might they also have made mistakes in their estimation of how hot and how serious the fires were? And whilst there are clearly fires in World Trade Center 7, they are isolated. Areas of the building are burning out and the fire is moving on toward new fuel sources. These two pictures were taken shortly before the collapse and they show no serious fire at the height at which NIST claimed the collapse initiated, but rather a burned out area that would actually be cooling. World Trade Center 7 was not a towering inferno, although it did have some fires. This on the other hand is Building 5. It was a much smaller building than Building 7, but it was well alight across most of its floors. Wouldn't it be reasonable to assume that the steel in this building would be undergoing similar stresses to that of World Trade Center 7? This is a building afterwards. Compare that to building 7. Reduce to a smoking pile of rubble in 6.6 .6 seconds. Over 2 seconds of that in free fall acceleration. Which means it met no resistance for that period of time. And even if you ignore the strength of the building, ignore shear studs, floor slabs and crucial details and elements, the reasons given by NIST still cannot account for this building 
turning rapidly into a smoking debris pile. And fire and gravity just aren't enough to achieve what we observed happening to this building on 9-11.